Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick. Welcome back to Spark Gap Garage. And in today's episode, we are working on my wife's 2015 Buick Encore. Today, we are doing the front strut assembly and also the rear shock absorber assembly all in this one video. Now, this repair can easily be done at home or in your garage with basic hand tools and this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so to begin with, block your wheels, get your car jacked up on whatever side you're gonna start with. I'm gonna start on this side. Uh, so technically, I blocked actually both back wheels, so this is fine. Um, that's to prevent the vehicle from rolling backwards while you jack it. So I got the vehicle already jacked up, and what you want to do is now get your tire off. Now, I already have stuff loosened up. That way you can just see how it's done instead of watching me fight my life off and getting some of these bolts. Now, I'll show you some tips and tricks once we get the tire off on some of the strut bolts and uh, what I've done to help break them loose. So we'll get the tire off. So this is your sway bar end link right here. That's your sway bar and all that goodness right there. But your sway bar end link is under all sorts of tension. And as you see, I actually have, let's get some light on the subject. I got this loosened up a little bit. That way I can just demonstrate how to take it out. Um, but the it's kind of tilted downward, which is kind of fun so that's actually where this jack comes into play so i will put you guys back what i mean by knuckle is the bottom side of let's see if i can get some light in there right there so you're going to put your knuckle or your uh your jack there and you're going to lift up now if there is a grease point on there you definitely do not want to lift it from there because that will snap off your grease zerk and then you have to fish it out and that's not one so get it lined up this is where i like to start so just kind of supporting it right now you're going to use the spring force as your advantage when you're taking off the end link nut and that's what that is going to do is hold this rod from spinning so you get this uh bolt off i forgot what size it is but you're going to get this this nut off i mean you're going to get that nut off then with the jack and you'll see right now we're going to lift up the entire suspension and that is going to go from pivoting down to level and then you can pull this out lift up on the knuckle until you see There you go. You see that's moving right there. That just took the spring tension off and now I can do is drop it off like this. Then what I recommend doing is dropping it all the way back down. Now on these bolts, you can see that there's like splines and stuff or teeth, if you want to call it that. So that actually grips into this metal right here for your struts. So what you're going to do is once you get these broken free, you're going to put your nut back on to where there's a little bit of thread in there and use a hammer and lightly tap it that way and you'll get to this result. And what that does is get both of these out. Now I haven't done it with the bottom one yet, so I will actually show you that right now. Okay guys, so I got to the point where the nut is kind of on there a couple of threads and what you're going to do is without whacking this thing move it off to the side just give it a tap like that same thing on the bottom one you might have to give it a little tap the tap 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 roo get this backed off a little bit more and she'll pull out now you will see that i can move this now by hand and what this jack is doing by having it supporting this is just that it's supporting it so when I go like, wee, like that, my bolts are out. Now this thing doesn't flop down, hurt, dirt, uh, hurt or damage either of these, and you definitely don't want that. Okay, so this is really cool. Like I said, this strut is actually one of the nicer ones. So up above, we have just one nut that we gotta take off, and that's it. Then this guy is, there we go. And the house dropped down. But uh, this guy is literally being held in by 
See what you got for you. This nut up top, right here. So now I'm gonna pop the hood in this next segment, pop the hood and we'll get this nut off. And we might have to hold uh, the T or Torx, whatever you wanna call it, while we get this freed up. But uh, in the next segment, I'll bring you up where we're underneath the hood. Okay guys, so now we are underneath the hood and there's quite a bit of a process that you gotta do in order to get that one nut up on top. And what this process is, you gotta get these tabbies, and you probably can't see it. Let's see if I can pull one out. There you go. All, all the way down this drip rail here, you'll see those little tabs right there. There's one right in front of my finger. Um, you gotta get those pried up. Now, if you happen to break them, that's no big deal. There is a trim tool kit, which I will find a little bit later in this segment uh, to show you that you can get and replace these because I guarantee you these are going to break and it's almost even just worthwhile cutting them because they're just so much of a nuisance. Now once you get these guys out there's one there I believe there's every so often following this drip rail here around there's every so often you'll find another one of these clips. What you got to do is then get these windshield wipers off and in the next segment I'll show you how to do that. So stick around. Okay so now in this next segment I'm going to teach you guys how to actually pull the window wipers off. Now with a flathead screwdriver or something pry up on this cover to where it pops open like that and with a 15 millimeter for this case 15 millimeter um, nut you're going to use that like butter do not drop this nut I'm telling myself this do not drop this nut and watch I'm gonna drop the nut this is the window uh, wiper windshield wiper arm puller so you can see the little arm piece so the way this works is goes around here you get it somewhat centered up to where this rod is directly centered on the bolt that the of the nut you just took off. Now this is a 13 millimeter nut or whatever you want to call it. So in a tightening motion, ready tighty, you're gonna slowly pop it off just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the uh, right side if you're facing this way or far uh, far left driver's side, however you think of it. So I'm gonna pause the video here, go to the next segment, and we'll have this off, and then move on to actually moving this out of the way. Okay, so now that we have the window wiper arm pieces moved out of the way, or actually removed, then now we are to the point where we can move the drip rail out of the way, and that is as simple as giving it a little pull. Now with the arm pieces, you'll see the studs that are left over. Uh, you will have to lift up and over that to get that out of the way. And then for over here, it's just as simple as moving. Now keep a, like kind of remind yourself on how this tucks into where, let's see if I can get a better view over here, where the rainwater slides down or um, directs or is directed into the drip rail. That's kind of important. So underneath this cap here is a nut. You'll take the cap off. Now, just like the beginning of the video, I already loosened stuff up. That way I can save myself the embarrassment of turning red and struggling in uh, the video. So this nut is a 15 16 nut. Yours might vary, but mine for this case is a 15 16 nut. Now in the middle of the rod, I call it the rod, the, pu uh, the push rod for the shock absorber is what the nut is threaded onto, is a Torx bit. I don't know the exact size Torx bit, but I actually ended up not having to use the Torx bit. And the point of the Torx is you put a Torx bit in there with a ratchet, you hold onto it and then get a wrench around the nut and then break the nut free and then you can move on with your life. Okay, so now that we're on to the reassembly real fast, I wanted to go over some parts. There are differences between the two brand new strut, uh, strut assemblies. 
you have a driver's side and a passenger side or right left however you want to think of it now one way you can differentiate the differences uh, differentiate means differences of right from left and left from right is only do one side at a time and match up your old part with your new okay so for the reassembly it's the exact opposite of disassembly but to actually demonstrate you have your brand new strut assembly right here take the annoying paper that goes with it take off the brand new lock nuts that should come with your strut this should come with your strut um, so one way to tell you're putting this on right is this little flange tabby thing goes to your sway bar end link here and so that's going to sit on just like so now your knuckle assembly which is this is completely as low as possible and what you want to do is kind of multitask set your nut and stuff off to the side guide up to where guide your strut assembly up to where you can see it grab your nut and bushing washer whatever you want to call it and just get it on a couple of threads i recommend leaving this a little loose to where you feel a little comfortable there we go so now the strut assembly is just kind of hanging in hey, uh, hanging out basically something i forgot to mention when i'm reassembling these kind of things i like to use a jack to kind of help me lift whatever you know knuckle or whatever i'm working with and that's just so i don't have to strain lifting this and now you can see it's trying to rotate on me but you get our lined up get the jack and the jack will aid you so you get it roughly where it needs to be get your nuts and bolts which i head off to the side same orientation so you want to check your threads check the teeth on your bolts just basically check them make sure they're good to reuse you can add a little amount of blue loctite which i'm not going to do because i'm not worried about you know these coming loose the threads are actually pretty nice you just push them through loosely like that do the same thing with your bottom bolt there we go get your two nuts I believe they're 15 16 or 13 oh geez i forgot i think they're like a 13 16 where are they yeah so there are 13 16 it is a tight fit on the, the actual bolt itself but it is a 13 16 so now this is where the jack really really comes into play let me tilt you guys up and there we go so this as you notice the hole for the strut is right here and my sway bar end link is way up here so this is where it comes in handy underneath your knuckle where i told you to lift on start lifting start lifting you'll get to a certain point and what you're doing is compressing your shock absorber and brand new spring. Now everything is loose right now, which is just fine, but you wanna make sure you have the nuts on the top and these two, that way this guy, your strut, doesn't fly out at you when you're doing this. So continue lifting. The jack is doing all the work. There we go. So it's in there. Now with your, I believe this is a three quarter nut. I am not entirely sure. Don't remember it exactly. But get this on a couple of threads, just like everything else. And then you are, there we go. You will have to probably hold the back side with vice grips or there is a Torx uh, bit here that I would recommend doing. But this is how I kind of get everything situated where it needs to be. Now, at this point, what I recommend doing is looking everything over, making sure nothing's going to bind up when you turn, operate the vehicle. But you can also get your 
stuff kind of oriented how you want and make sure these, your little securement, whatever you want to call them, align with what the strut has. So right now, as of right now, everything is looking really good. In the next segment, I will have pretty much everything kind of tightened down because we're getting to the point where you can snug everything down. And then, like I said, I'll make another segment on where the torque spikes are at because I don't have them right now, but I will get you guys the torque spikes for these. So just wanted to show you guys this little trick. So there's different things that you can do. This is actually an Allen. I thought it was a Torx. This is not a Torx style rod for the shock absorber. So this is an Allen style. So get yourself, for my case, get yourself a five millimeter or metric five uh, Allen and then a three quarter wrench and sit there and I'm not holding it right now because it's not really, really straining on it. But all you're gonna do is hold this and turn turn your wrench until you get it tight. And then for down here, which you cannot see, this guy right here, your sway bar end link, is actually a Torx. Now you might get away with actually using a Allen set, or if you don't have a Torx, I recommend getting a Torx set. But okay, so I'm gonna get these tightened down, snug down, however you look at it, and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so now that we actually have everything torqued down to spec, I'm gonna give you the specs right now. So the 18 millimeter sway bar end link nut, which is this guy right here is going to be torqued down to 25 to 30 foot pounds. These are uh, these are the specs that I found. I definitely recommend doing your research to verify these. Uh, I just found these on a forum, so they may not they bleh, they may not be OEM, but use your discretion. This is what I'm torquing mine down to, but uh, just wanted to share these with you. What I found at least. Your two 13 16 nuts and bolts for the lower strut, 35 to 40 foot pounds. That is these guys right there and there. Your three quarter nut lock nut for the top of the strut, which is that guy right there, is 25 to 30 foot pounds. Now, again, like I said, these are from a forum, I don't know how accurate they are but they seem pretty tight enough that I'm not too worried about it, especially with that being a lock nut, that, you know, these having lock nuts and stuff like that, they're the OEM parts, so, or nuts, bolts, and stuff like that, so not too worried about that. These actually seem quite fine for me, at least. So this is actually what I have for Midnight Special, but this will work just fine. This is a Chrysler body retainer kit. But it's uh, a kit that you can get from, I believe, like Walmart sells them. This one I got from, uh, I believe, Amazon, actually. Either Amazon or AutoZone, I forget. But one of these is going to fit, and I bet you it's probably going to be, actually, probably this guy up here. But I'm not going to actually install these right now because, like I said, I still got driver's side to do, but that's just fine. So... I recommend getting this, especially to make your life easier and you end up cutting these, then you can just replace them and if they're worn out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so now we are on the rear shock absorber. So this is actually very, very easy. I had to figure it out for myself because I've never worked on this car before as far as shocks. So straight, pretty straightforward. Once you get the tire off like I have it, make sure you have obviously your car on a jack uh, or jack stand, I mean. Um, so once you get the tire off, it's very, very simple. I'm going to bring you in here. You have two 18 millimeter, nu uh, not nuts, bolts at the top of the shock tower. And then on the back side here, you have a 13 16 bolt that runs through. So these are the basic tools you'll need some PB blaster or uh, penetrant of your choice, some sort of ratchet, 
Um, breaker bar, it doesn't have to be this fancy. I like to use the vice grips for uh, holding the old shock absorber um, piston or push rod, whatever you want to call it. When you take the nut off, and I'll, I'll show you the nut and stuff once we get the, uh, this is actually the new one that I replaced. But uh, once we get that off, then I will show you what to do. But we got the sockets here, a 13 16 We have a 18 millimeter, which probably doesn't make sense why it's going metric and standard, but that's fine. And then a 15 millimeter. Doesn't have to be deep sockets like I have, but that's just my preference. So once you get the tire off, get you guys set up. I'm going to go after, I'm going to start with the top two bolts, which are the 18 millimeter. Now, just like the rest of this uh, video, I had these bolts broken free, obviously, because I just got done replacing this. I wanted to figure out how to do this before I shared with you what I found out and learned. So now these are going to be tight. Uh, so that's why I recommend using the ratchet or breaker bar. But because these are loose, I can use my gun on this. So voila. So that one's that. So with the 13 16 socket and ratchet, what you're going to do is break the bolt free. Now you might have to use a breaker bar because it, where it ends up or the end of the, the bolt is, is kind of open to the elements. So it might rust up. So a breaker bar is good. But again, because I had this broken free, should just pop right off. Come on. So this is where the 15 millimeter socket comes in play. Now you can move this dampener, whatever you want to call it, the bump stock, but this is uh, an important piece to keep. So two pieces you're going to keep on the old shock. Now your shock absorber is going to look similar to this. Uh, you'll have the upper shock tower mounting two bolts locations where you pulled out the two 18 millimeter bolts. That is these guys right here. Now pay attention to the orientation of this, uh, this part because it's got to go up in the same way. And then also the other part you're going to keep is this bump stock, if you will, or shield because it's kind of like integrated dust cover kind of thing. So I'm not going to do this with the new shock because this is a new shock. But with the vice grips, you can clamp because you're going to throw the old one away. Clamp around here. And then with a breaker bar, get your 15 millimeter bull on socket on there. And maybe at this point, spray some PB blaster in there, but break that free. This will come off the shield boot, whatever you want to call it, uh, bump stock, whatever you want to call it, will go with it. And then onto the new assembly, it just, this just slides on. And then this slides on as well. And like I said, pay attention to the orientation of this because it's kind of important on when you go to reinstall this all right guys so when reassembling it's the exact opposite i always like to start at the top that way it can help you so with the assembly going in let's see if i can get some light in this situation like so you're gonna put that up in there set you back down there you go you are going to get your two 18 millimeter bolts started. I always, always recommend getting these started by hand. That way you know you are not cross threading. So this is just gonna be pretty self-explanatory where it goes. You're gonna start this by hand. Now at this point, you have everything loose. Go ahead and start by tightening this one down. I like to just like, I like to like, I like to get this snug down, get it relatively snug, and then move up to your 18 millimeter bolts, get these 18 millimeter bolts snug down as well, and then we will get into the torque spec side of things. You probably could use a ratchet with an extension here. It's completely fine. 
Okay, so these are snugged down. Now, just like the torque specs from or for the struts assembly up front, I found these assembly uh, bolts uh, specs on a forum, so don't quote me on this. Definitely do your research. I found 35, 40 foot pounds here and 35, 40 foot pounds on the lower one. Something else I'd like to point out is your bump stock, whatever you want to call it, will sit down wherever it wants. And that is completely normal and completely fine. This does not have to be up in here, up in there. So don't lose your mind on that. So now that you got your, your two 18 millimeter bolts torqued to spec and your 13 16 bolt torqued to spec, go ahead and slap your tire back on, torque the lug nuts back down to spec. I average, uh, or I do an average between 100 foot pounds to 110 foot pounds. Now yours may vary, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you don't have a torque, uh, torque wrench, then just whatever you normally do, I guess. But again, not liable for anything. Yeah. I want to thank each and every single one of you guys for watching this video. If you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe. Comment on any future things you want to see as far as the Encore, Midnight Special. I haven't done anything with a ruckus just yet on the channel, but we are going to get there. I got a video in the works kind of thing going on. But again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks guys.